Muchachos y muchachas. Okay, so we haven't talked about Disney, and there's been quite a bit of development ever since, as you guys can see in the news cycle. But the last time we visited Disney, it was at the very genesis of all this when a small faction of their employees, they were outraged, they were throwing a fit about a bill at the time that was passing uh, in which they coined as the Don't Say Gay Bill. Uh, it wasn't actually that, you know, and that's where they were able to propagandize a lot on this idea that it was about, you know, going against gay rights and all these things when really it was about the children. It was about, uh, you know, the indoctrination and, you know, not infiltrating their minds so early with curriculums and all that. Well, Disney at first was neutral. They decided, you know, they were like, we're not going to comment on that. And then because they caved into like 10 people from their employees uh, who were making this fit, they decided to completely turn their culture and go along with the narrative. Uh, they were changing the way that they were going to uh, storyline uh, new, I guess, projects and stuff like that. And, you know, that's that's the name of the game. It's always once you go woke, you go broke. And ever since then, uh, you know, there has been quite a cultural backlash against Disney. Well, ever since then, there was some legislation that was passed, uh, including uh, this recent one in which it strips Disney the right to self-govern. I guess that's the most simple way I can put it. And I wanted to go through a little bit of history on this uh, and then kind of give you the up to date. And also Jenna Ellis does not agree with what Florida did. It's very interesting. Stay right there. We're going to go through it. All right, so let's get some history lesson first. And I would like to thank uh, my friend Red Pill Babe for resurfacing this. Uh, and this is something that I completely forgot about, but this was definitely a, a big red pill, uh, you know, in the recent years for me about Disney. Um, but this is definitely it's going to support a lot of context to what Florida just did. So I think it's important for us to know. So none other than the Daily Beast, surprisingly. Sometimes the Daily Beast is getting it right. And they actually published a story in 2017 how the uh, cat igloo apple, take the first letter of it, cat igloo apple, this one right here, cat igloo apple, helped Disney conquer Florida. Uh, and this is, it, it's a very worthwhile read, so I'm gonna go through this. Starting in the mid 1960s, when Disney set out the, to establish Disney World theme park, they were determined to get land at below market prices and Disney operatives engaged in far ranging conspiracy to make sure sellers had no idea who was buying their Central Florida property. By resorting to such tactics, Disney acquired more than 40 square miles of land for less than $200 an acre. But how to maintain control once Disney's empire had been acquired? The solution turned out to be a cartoon simple, thanks to the cat igloo apple. And we're going to get to the rest, but first I'd like to thank the sponsor of this video, My Patriot Supply. Friends, we are facing more threats than ever before. When our leaders are warning of global food shortages, including here in the United States, it's time to act. Go to preparewithnatalie.com and get your long-term emergency food storage from My Patriot Supply while you can. We don't know when more empty store shelves may hit, so now is the best time to act. My Patriot Supply is by far the number one preparedness company to rely on. With millions of satisfied customers this past year, Act quickly and save $150 on a vital three-month emergency food kit. This kit provides breakfasts, lunches, dinners, drinks, and snacks totaling over 2,000 calories per day. Every family in America should have at least one three-month supply of food per person. Now you can. Go to preparewithnatalie.com and save $150 for your three-month food kits. That's preparewithnatalie.com. Disney's key contact was a uh, consummate cloak and dagger operator 
William Wild Bill Donovan, sometimes called the father of the CIA. He was also the founding partner of Donovan Leisure, Newton and Irvine, a New York law firm whose attorneys included future Cat Igloo Apple director William Casey. Donovan's attorneys provided fake identities for Disney agents. They also set up a secret communication center. I mean, imagine that. They did all of that for the setup of Disney? Donovan's attorney provided fake identities for Disney agents. They also set up a secret communication center and orchestrated a disinformation campaign in order to maintain control over all, over the overall development. Disney had and his advisors realized the company would have to Find a way to limit the voting power of the private residents, even though they acknowledge their efforts violated the Equal Protection Clause of the U.S. Constitution. So they knew that they were going into some seedy territory of violating some constitutional rights of their citizens, right? Um, here again, the cat igloo potato. I'm sorry, <laughs> the cat igloo potato. <laughs> the cat igloo apple. I'm sorry. Take the first letter of those of that. Here again, the cat igloo apple uh, was there to help. Disney's principal legal strategist for Florida was a senior clandestine operative named Paul Hellowell. Having helped launch the CIA secret war in Indochina, Hellowell relocated to Miami in 1960 in order to coordinate dirty tricks against Castro. At a secret seminar Disney convened in May 1965, Hellowell came up with an approach that to this day allows the Disney organization to avoid taxation and environmental regulation as well as maintain immunity from the U.S. Constitution. It was the same strategy that Cat Igloo Apple pursued in foreign countries, set up a puppet government, then use that regime to do your bidding. All right here. All right here. So basically they created their own city. Uh, where you could, you know, you, you could have your own local government. You know, they, they basically self-governed themselves. Though no one lived there, Hollowell advised Disney to establish at least two phantom cities, then use the fake governments to control land and uh, control land use and to make sure the public monies, the theme park generated state and Disney's private lands on paper, Disney World cities would be regular American hometowns, except their only official residents would be a handful of handpicked Disney loyalists who periodically elected the officials who in turn ceded complete control to Disney executives. In early 1967, the Florida legislature created Hallowell's two cities, both named for the artificial reservoirs, Disney engineers created the obstructing area's natural water flow. When you visit Disney's Magic Kingdom, you are visiting the city of Bay Lake, Florida. The other was the city of Lake Buena Vista. Oh, I'm sorry, Lake City of Lake Buena Vista. It just came out my mouth wrong. In both cities, in violation of both the U.S. and Florida constitutions, the Disney engineer legislation established a property qualification for holding elective office requiring that each candidate for a for office there must be the owner either directly or as a trustee of a real property situated in the city in order to be eligible to hold the office of councilman. Wow. So you had to have that much direct control over the property in order to be a governing official, right? Continued on, though enacted by legislature, this and other crucial pieces of Disney enabling legislation which would reshape Central Florida and affect the lives of tens of millions of people was written by teams of Disney lawyers working in New York at the Donovan uh, firm and in Miami at Hellowell's offices. Disney lawyers in California signed off on the text before it was flown to Tallahassee, where, without changing a word, Florida's compliant legislators enacted it to law. No, no one thought of it reading it, or I'm sorry, no one thought of reading it. One ex-lawmaker later remarked, later, after the houses were sold, compliant legislatures, they excluded all of the residents from celebration of Disney's domain to prevent them from voting. So they tricked them. They tricked these residents. Those that were never forgot 
those who were there never forgot the day Disney inaugurated what truly would be the Magic Kingdom in Florida, magically above the law. The governor and his cabinet came down from Tallahassee. TV crews were there in attendance, along with Florida's most eminent civic leaders. Right on schedule, the curtains parted on the screen. Walt Disney gave him such beloved self dep uh, deprecating excuse me smiled and announced that in florida he was going to create a new kind of america not just a theme park um so anyway you get the picture right uh you get the picture you get the uh, for the most part you get the picture of of this right <laughs> so with that being said now that you have a little bit more context i think i can lead you into the water and g give you this understanding of why florida did this right so that's what happened uh, just recently. Florida Governor DeSantis, Ron DeSantis, is applauded by children as he officially strips Disney of its 55-year-old special tax and land privileges after Biden slammed ugly GOP for going after Mickey. <laughs> So, like that's like that's their last that is their last bid oh my like imagine the president of the united states that's your last hell mary they're going after mickey and his friends guys like that's what you have that's the intellectual uh, uh lacking that you have that you have to you have to paint it in a way where the local government or the state government is going after cartoon characters I just found that funny. Anyway, so Ron DeSantis won his war against Disney today as he officially stripped the company of its 55-year-old special privileges that effectively allowed it to self-govern. The Florida governor wrote it into law, the plan which scrapped the Reedy Creek Improvement District, uh, meaning the firm will no longer be able to govern itself. Um, and so with that, uh, there's uh, what else? Uh, people are being are slamming this, right? Uh, and, and they're the likely people you would imagine to slam this. And look, there were some cultural politics in this, right? I began in my intro giving you guys the genesis of how this was kind of, I guess, bubbled up. And it was by the, the Disney going woke, they decided to side with a culture that was uh, a bit more pervasive in what they were asking for children. And uh, with that, you know, you know, Florida government was like, you know what? You want to play with us? You want to play with the kids? I, I, you, you think that you are just, you know, you, you, your crap doesn't stink, that you are above the law. And as I, as you guys learned, they kind of were, right? Because they were self-governed. They said, all right, you want to play games? We'll play games. And so they, you know, they stripped them of that. So, you know, there's some undertones of a jab back, a tit for tat, if you will. And this was a big blow. If, um, and with saying that, it's kind of weird because you would think like a lot of people are obviously, myself included, applauding this this move. I think it's a smart one. But there are some that are slamming this. And you wouldn't think it would be from the conservative side, but apparently it is. Jenna Ellis, you guys remember Jenna Ellis? Jenna Ellis is the former legal counsel, I believe, of Donald Trump. Um, and uh, she made a surprising statement on Twitter where she says, hi, Disney, open to offer help def to defend your right to constitutionally protected free speech against Florida's illegal retaliation. A illegal? illegal i i'm just having trouble i'm having trouble ingesting that right um and it, and it makes me very weary and weirded out that jenna ellis is trying to defend disney i mean and and the only way i would say okay you know she's she's defending them off of a constitutional thing I think you have to bring everything in context with with the situation, right? It's it's not about the free speech. It's about uh, you know Disney possibly infiltrating the minds of young people with everything they want to do. They they have a powerhouse in Florida because they've been self governing ever since. Um, it's it's more than free speech, right? We're fighting a culture war, and look, this is 
this is where I just don't understand the loose links in conservatism like this, where it's like, you know, we only want to win sometimes, <laughs> right? We don't, we only want to win sometimes. Oh, but there's a technicality. Let's talk about like, you, you don't understand, like, we cannot keep going like this and win the culture war, war if we're playing at in looser terms than the other side is is playing if, if that makes any sense to you right you have to punch back and you have to punch back hard and i think that with what florida did that was a hard blow uh but then having someone say oh hey um there's a technicality let's fight for your free speech and it's not going well for her a lot of people are backlashing against this um going forward uh there there i definitely saw some where here we go uh, not a single person on the right is calling to end Disney's free speech, someone says. Uh, just special tax privileges, which are Florida's prerogative, not going to stop the sur uh, surrender clause of the GOP from gatekeeping. And then she responds, no, they're just calling for Disney to be punished by the government for exercising free speech. That's illegal retribution. I think that's an interpretation, right? If and look, I'm I'm no lawyer. I'm no legal expert. Um, I'm just saying there's a bit of a, a, a semantics sort of interpretation here, right? Uh, I, I don't think that this is a legal retribution, right? I, I think that Disney has had their rights. I mean, you guys, we heard it from the Daily Beast. Did that sound right to you? I mean, what, are we talking about that? Like... Do, do we need to educate Jenna Ellis on how all of this Disney Genesis came to be, right? Would that be illegal? Uh, that was un unconstitutional. So why are we? Why aren't we talking about that? But she seems to be fighting for Disney really, really hard. Um, what else? What else? What else? Uh, yeah, let's see. Uh, John Miller also commented. LOL. Jenna has gone off the rails and then he uh, she quoted this and saying, yeah, I'm fighting for the right for everyone, even people I disagree with to exercise free speech without government retribution. That's totally off the rails and and constitutional. I mean, it's that's just. I mean, it's it, again, it's like weak links in the conservative space. It's like, oh, you know, we got to We got to be fair. You know, have they been fair to us? Have they been fair to us this whole time? Really? Like, we really do? We have... No. The, like, we're losing a culture war, right? We we have to fight back. So we'll take a win. We'll take a W when we see it. Uh, Len L says, Isn't it insane you're one of the good guys, but because you point out obvious legal issues, you must be some woke left nut job. And she says, yeah, unfortunately, it's so much easier for people to say I must be a rhino or gone woke that actually engage in a substantive legal constitutional issues here. And then continued on. Uh, John Miller responds uh, to her comments in which she quoted him. And he says, yes, I understand in theory your argument, though, I think it's wrong. The off the rails part is not necessarily acknowledging their so-called right to sexually uh, abuse kids, but to go as far as to enthusiastically offer your services to give political adversaries tax breaks. And then she says, this is completely disingenuous and disgusting. I have never said anyone has a right to, you know, exploit children. I have said Disney has the same constitutionally protected right to free speech and to oppose legislation and to anyone else free from government retaliation. Sit down. Yeah, but Jenna, like, look at the speech that they're talking to the public. Like, look at the speech that they are infiltrating in the young minds of, of kids, like, it's not the same thing. It's it, it's incongruent. It's not the same. We're talking about them having the power, exercising that power and the resources and overhead that they have grounded in a self-governed part of Florida uh, to leverage that and to have all of the free reign in the media and the kids space and all that. It, it's all connected. It's not necessarily all about free speech. There's a lot of other logistics that are included in this. So I, 
I wholeheartedly disagree. Um, then someone else says, uh, first of all, they are doing it and I do object. It doesn't matter that I have objected without action. It's just talk. I didn't make the rules, but I'm going to play by them. And no principle that I accept will ever, ever, ever make me less free. And then she says, so if you object to a blue state doing this, why cheer a red state for doing the same type of constitutional retaliation? That's inconsistent and precisely the point here. Um, and, and then she says, this is weaponizing government to penalize a corporation for exercising constitutionally protected speech that crosses the line between playing politics and government acting illegally. And look, this is this is what I'm going to say as an ending note. It's not about the free speech. OK, it's about abusing uh, the 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 fact that they had uh, self-governing power, uh, you know, and they tricked a lot of people uh, in their livelihoods into getting that right. It's it. That's one factor. But again, you're taking a small technicality out of a bigger situation to make this about what you're trying to argue. It's not. This is this is more than free speech, right? This is more than you know, oh, be fair. This is a culture war. So anyway, uh, that's those are my thoughts on this. Uh, just to give you guys a whole lowdown of everything that's going on right now with Disney and the legislation in Florida. Like, guys, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Uh, are you applauding this act by this, uh, the Florida state government? Let me know your thoughts. Uh, do you agree with Jenna Ellis? Do you think that uh, this is violating their free speech, although you see Disney uh, openly advocating for changing their content and their projects and their media and their characters to include uh, this new ideological, I don't know what to call it without, you know, sounding so based, but you know what I mean? Like they're trying to infiltrate the minds of young children with their media. So anyway, with that being said, I'd love to know what you think. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I really appreciate it. I will catch you guys in the next one. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed that video. You can find more videos on my newly redone website, natalydenise.com, where I've got a series going on, naming names, as well as the truth speak easy, where I can speak easy about current day topics and controversies. Grab your membership today, become a member, or just simply a patron. I so appreciate all of your love and your support.